What if I told you that the DNA of the Irish holds secrets older than the pyramids of Egypt so unique, it continues to baffle scientists today? Ireland, a small island on the edge of Europe, has been home to ancient civilizations, fearless warriors, and a culture so rich that it echoes through centuries. But what lies beneath the surface in the blood is even more fascinating. Irish DNA isn't just Celtic. It's a mysterious mix that links to early farmers, Stone Age tomb builders, and maybe even Iberian seafarers. Some say the Irish are one of the last truly ancient peoples in Europe. And despite Viking invasions, English rule, and mass emigration, the genetic signature has remained incredibly distinct. How? Why? In this video, we're diving deep into what makes Irish DNA so special, from ancient migrations to modern discoveries. If you've got Irish roots or just a curious mind, you're in the right place. Stick around, hit like, and subscribe if you love uncovering hidden history. And drop a comment. Do you think DNA can truly shape who we are? So are you ready to uncover what's truly hidden in Irish bloodlines? Let's go there. Chapter 1. The Ancient Irish When the last Ice Age ended, much of Northern Europe was still covered in frozen wasteland. But as the ice sheets pulled back, a small group of pioneers made their way to the Emerald Island we now call Ireland. These were not the Irish as we know them today, but the very first settlers, hunter-gatherers, arriving over 10,000 years ago. Their DNA still whispers through the bloodlines of Ireland, making the Irish some of the most genetically distinct people in all of Europe. Imagine standing on that raw, untamed land, forests thick with oak and elm, rivers teeming with salmon, and wild herds of deer roaming free. Into this wilderness came small bands of Mesolithic people, living off the land, leaving behind tools and traces that scientists still uncover today. Modern DNA studies have linked today's Irish to these very early settlers, showing that their genetic fingerprints never fully disappeared. Then came the Neolithic farmers, thousands of years later, who changed everything. They brought livestock, agriculture, and an incredible gift for monument building. Long before the Egyptians raised the pyramids, the people of Ireland were already constructing massive stone tombs. Sites like Newgrange and Polnabrone Dolmen stand as silent giants, older than Stonehenge, older than Giza. And what's truly fascinating is that DNA evidence shows some of these tomb builders may have belonged to powerful ruling families, passing their genes and their legacies down through generations. So what does this tell us about the Irish story? That Ireland wasn't just a remote corner of Europe, it was a cradle of innovation, a place where ancient people mastered farming, architecture, and community thousands of years ahead of their time. Their blood still flows in modern Ireland, a living connection to the dawn of civilization. But here's a question for you. What do you think is more impressive, the survival of these ancient genes across thousands of years, or the building of monuments that still stand today. And if you could step back into Ireland 5,000 years ago, would you want to meet the hunter-gatherers of the Mesolithic or the farmer architects of the Neolithic? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I can't wait to see what you think. And if you're fascinated by this journey, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video so more people can discover the hidden story of the ancient Irish. Chapter 2 Viking and Norman Influences When we think of Ireland's past, it's easy to picture Viking longships cutting through the mist, sails raised, warriors hungry for conquest. The truth is, the Vikings did arrive on Irish shores in the 9th century, raiding monasteries and founding towns like Dublin, Wexford, and Limerick. But here's the surprising part. While their swords left scars on Ireland's history, their DNA left only faint traces. Modern genetic studies reveal that despite centuries of raids, trade, and even intermarriage, Viking influence on Irish DNA is far smaller than many imagine. The Irish genome remained overwhelmingly Irish, with Viking markers only sprinkled in most visible in coastal areas where their settlements thrived. So the big question is, did the Vikings really change Ireland, or did Ireland absorb them instead? Then came the Normans in the 12th century, descendants of Vikings who had settled in France. They built castles, introduced new laws, and reshaped Irish politics. Yet, once again, their genetic impact was surprisingly limited. The Irish landscape still holds their stone towers, but the Irish bloodline stayed remarkably pure. 
as the old saying goes, more Irish than the Irish themselves. This leaves us with a fascinating contrast myths versus reality. Legends tell of Viking warriors sweeping in and reshaping the island, but the science says otherwise. Irish DNA has remained one of the least diluted in all of Europe. Isn't it incredible how a people so often invaded manage to hold on so tightly to their roots? So here's something for you. Do you think cultural influence, like cities, castles, and language, is more powerful than genetic influence? Or does bloodline matter more when defining identity? And if the Vikings had left a stronger genetic mark, do you think Ireland would feel less Irish today? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Let's get a real conversation going. And if you're enjoying this journey through Ireland's hidden story, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and share it with someone who loves history. Trust me, the next chapter uncovers something even more extraordinary about what makes the Irish truly unique. Chapter 3. Isolation and Purity When you think of Ireland, you probably picture rolling green fields, rugged coastlines, and misty hills. But behind that beauty lies something extraordinary, an island whose very isolation shaped not just its history, but the DNA of its people. For thousands of years, Ireland sat on the far western edge of Europe, cut off by the sea. Unlike mainland nations where armies, traders, and settlers constantly moved in and out, Ireland remained relatively untouched. This meant that ancient genetic patterns traces of the very first Celtic and pre-Celtic peoples were preserved like a time capsule. Imagine that. While most of Europe's DNA became a patchwork quilt of endless mixing, the Irish held onto strands of purity rarely seen elsewhere. So what does this mean in real life? Studies show that Irish DNA carries unique markers not commonly found in other populations. Certain traits like higher frequencies of red hair, fair skin, and even specific immune system strengths can be traced back through centuries of relative isolation. These aren't just stereotypes. They're written into the very blueprint of Irish identity. And here's something that might surprise you. Compared to almost any other European nation, Ireland has one of the lowest of admixture. In simple terms, while other countries' genetic pools mixed again and again over centuries of migration, Ireland's remained remarkably stable. That's why scientists today often turn to the Irish genome when trying to understand Europe's ancient past. It's like a genetic window into history. But here's where it gets really fascinating. Does this purity come at a cost? On one hand, it preserves ancient traits. On the other, some argue that too much genetic isolation can reduce diversity, which plays an important role in adaptability. So the question is, did isolation make Ireland stronger, or did it make survival harder? What do you think? Is Ireland's genetic uniqueness a blessing that keeps its heritage alive, or does it raise challenges in a modern, interconnected world? Drop your thoughts in the comments, I'd love to hear different perspectives. And if you're enjoying this journey into Ireland's hidden story, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and share it with a friend who loves history as much as you do. Trust me, the next chapter only gets more surprising. Chapter 4. The Celtic Question We often hear the Irish proudly called Celtic. From Celtic knots to Celtic music, the word has become almost interchangeable with Irish identity. But here's the question that shakes things up. Are the Irish really Celtic? The answer depends on what you mean by Celtic. If you look at language, then yes, Ireland has one of the richest Celtic tongues, Gaelic, passed down through centuries. It connects directly to the broader Celtic family of languages spoken once across Europe. But when we turn to DNA, the story gets more complicated. Genetic studies reveal that the Irish are not direct descendants of the so-called classical Celts of Central Europe. Instead, Many Irish genetic markers link more closely to ancient peoples from the Iberian Peninsula, modern-day Spain and Portugal, who traveled north thousands of years ago. Some scientists even argue that what we call Celtic culture in Ireland may have been adopted through trade, influence, and language, rather than being the pure bloodline of Central European Celts. So what does that mean? It suggests that Celticness might not be something written in DNA, but something lived through culture, tradition, and language. That raises a deeper question. What truly defines identity, our blood, or the stories we carry forward? The Irish, then, may be genetically closer to Iberian ancestors than to Gauls or Britons. 
Yet culturally, they became one of the strongest symbols of Celtic heritage the world has ever seen. Isn't it fascinating how a people can transform borrowed traditions into something uniquely their own? Now I'll put it to you. If DNA shows Iberian roots, does that make the Irish less Celtic or does culture matter more than genetics? And what do you personally think defines Irishness today heritage, language, or lived experience? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear your take on this. And if this chapter sparked your curiosity, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and share it with a friend who loves history. Because the next chapter dives even deeper into how Ireland's genetic purity survived when so many nations around it changed beyond recognition. Chapter 5, Irish Traits Explained. When you picture the Irish, what comes to mind first? For many, it's the fiery red hair, the pale freckled skin, or the striking blue and green eyes. These traits aren't just stereotypes, they're deeply connected to Ireland's unique DNA. In fact, Ireland has one of the highest percentages of natural redheads in the world, with estimates ranging from 10 to 30 percent of the population. That's extraordinary when you realize how rare the MC1R gene mutation is globally. But why did these traits survive so strongly in Ireland? One theory is that in a cloud-covered land with limited sunlight, fair skin helped early Irish ancestors absorb more vitamin D. Over generations, the trait became more common, turning what might seem like a quirk of genetics into a survival advantage. Irish DNA also carries stories about health. Some genetic markers make certain diseases, like celiac disease, more common among the Irish. Yet at the same time, their genetic profile offers resilience in unexpected ways, giving them strengths in immunity that trace back thousands of years. This mix of vulnerability and toughness is part of what makes Irish genetics so fascinating. It's not just about appearance, but about endurance. Think about it. A nation marked by invasions, famines, and mass emigration, yet somehow always bouncing back. Could it be that resilience is written not only into Irish history, but into Irish DNA itself? Here's a question for you. Do you believe our DNA shapes who we are more than culture and environment? Or are traits like resilience born from struggle and experience rather than bloodlines? And on a lighter note, do you think red hair and freckles should be celebrated as one of Ireland's greatest badges of honor? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to see where you stand on this. And if you're enjoying this journey through the secrets of Irish DNA, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and share it with a friend. The next chapter will reveal how Ireland's story of survival carries lessons for the modern world that go far beyond genetics. Chapter 6. Lessons Beyond Genetics Ireland's story is often told through its battles, its poetry, and its music. But hidden within its DNA is something much deeper, survival. For thousands of years, this small island has endured waves of famine, invasion, and hardship. Yet its people have held on to their identity with remarkable strength. And that resilience, born in both blood and culture, carries lessons for the modern world that go far beyond genetics. Think about it, nations today face crises of identity, cultural loss, and pressure from globalization. Ireland has already walked that road. Despite centuries of outside influence, its language, traditions, and even its genetic uniqueness survived. Isn't that incredible? What other country can claim to have kept such a strong sense of self through so many storms? But resilience isn't just about survival, it's about adaptation. The Irish adapted when they had to, blending outside influences like Viking trade or Norman architecture into their own story, yet never letting go of their roots. Isn't that the real secret of endurance? Not resisting change, but shaping it in a way that keeps identity alive. So here's a question for you. In today's fast-changing world, do you think nations should focus more on protecting their traditions or on adapting and blending to survive? And on a personal level, what's one tradition in your own family or culture that you believe must be preserved no matter what? Drop your answers in the comments. I'd love to see how people around the world think about survival and identity. And remember, if you're enjoying this journey, don't just watch. Like, subscribe, and share this video so we can keep uncovering the hidden lessons of history together. Chapter 7. The Global Irish Gene When we talk about Irish DNA, it's not just confined to the island itself. In fact, you may carry Irish blood without even knowing it. How? 
because Irish genes have traveled the world through centuries of migration, hardship, and hope. The Irish diaspora is one of the largest in history. From the Great Famine of the 19th century to waves of emigration before and after, millions left Ireland seeking survival and opportunity. Ships carried families across the Atlantic to America, down to Australia, Canada, South Africa, and beyond. Today, it's estimated that up to 80 million people worldwide claim Irish ancestry, 10 times the population of Ireland itself. That means Irish DNA is woven into families on every continent. Think about the impact. Politicians in Washington, poets in Australia, musicians in Canada, and farmers in Argentina, all carrying echoes of the same small island. And it's not just cultural influence, it's genetic. Many people discover Irish roots only through DNA testing, often shocked to learn they share markers linked to the Emerald Isle. Could you be one of them? But here's the fascinating part. Even scattered across the globe, Irish genes still carry the same unique traits. Red hair, fair skin, resilience against hardship. The diaspora didn't erase the Irish story. It spread it, making the Irish one of the most global peoples on Earth. Isn't that remarkable? A tiny island, yet its legacy stretches across the map. So let me ask you, do you know anyone in your family who claims we've got Irish blood somewhere in the family tree? And if you could take a DNA test today, would you want to discover if part of you is Irish? Imagine finding out that your ancestors once stood on Irish soil before crossing the seas. Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear who among you has a connection, hidden or known, to Ireland's global story. And if this chapter inspired you, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and share it with a friend. Because the story of Ireland isn't just about the past, it's about how a people's spirit, and even their DNA, can circle the globe and live on in millions of us today. So what have we uncovered? Ireland isn't just a place of green fields, myths, and music. It's a land where DNA itself tells a story like no other. From the first hunter-gatherers after the Ice Age, to the farmers who built tombs older than the pyramids, from the resilience of surviving Vikings and Normans, to the question of Celtic identity, and finally to the Irish traits and global genes that touch lives far beyond the island, this is a people whose story is written in both blood and culture. But here's where it gets personal. Have you ever taken a DNA test? Did it surprise you? Could you have Irish roots you didn't even know about? With over 80 million people worldwide claiming Irish ancestry, the odds might be higher than you think. I'd love to hear your stories. Share them in the comments below. Do you carry a little piece of Ireland in your bloodline or in your heart? And if you've enjoyed this journey through Ireland's genetic story, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and share it with a friend. Because history isn't just about the past, it's about discovering the hidden threads that connect us all. Thanks for watching until next time. Keep exploring, keep learning, keep questioning, and keep the stories of the past alive. Gombeani dia duit.